Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Alon Paul. Uh, so we're going to do episode 8 here of this uh, regular run-through, and we're going to get started right away. Now you see I, I'm in the Nexus, but I accidentally uh, left my multiplayer on. Um, wasn't intending to do that. Uh, but, you know, it's it's fun. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now because I want to save a little bit of uh, brain space in my computer, number one. And I do like to see the other players to be honest. I mean, there's no reason why not, but it does gum up the um, graphics card a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and just turn that off. That way there's also no cheating involved or anything like that. So we're going to immediately get started with our run through here. We've got Ghosts in the Machine, Apollo the Adventure. We're going to look for a hollow terminus and see if we can have a little chat with him. He's our next stage in the Artemis storyline. I'm already noticing differences, like I said, with the base computer. It looks like you can go through the entire base computer rather than having to wait a couple of hours at a time. So, all right, let's do a scan. And it shows us where it is. Where is it? It's over here. On this water world. Interesting. Nope, nope, there are there is land on that world. Okay, great. A little sniffly in the mornings, I apologize. Still drinking coffee. Voice gets a little rough and a little deeper, too. I hope you don't mind that. All right. All right, let's drop down and take a quick peek because the hollow terminus should be near. Quick scan, that might be it. I don't see anything to the left. Oh, there it is. That's always the best way to find things. <clears throat> Pardon me. Let's see what we got here. Plus you can tell the volume on this is probably going to be a little better. I can actually scoop my mic back a little bit. There we go. How are we doing on supplies? Uh, let's see. Oxygen's pretty good. We could be a little bit higher on the, on the sodium. These two need to be higher. Not as worried about the cobalt, but having an extra cobalt wouldn't be a bad idea, or phosphorus. Gold and silver will acquire over time. Now, of course, first thing we do here is we hit this and get the little bit of uh, things out of it. You know what, while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, because we're gonna need it. Always need those, as often as you can get them. I'm only gonna get two out of the, from the beginning. For some reason at the beginning, when you first start the game, you only get two at a time. Later on, you'll get three and four. What? Learn some words? Learn words. I learn words. Okay. A little bit of extra nanites. Okay. How's my jetpack doing? Uh, we've got a lot of pluses. Let me see how high we can get. Can we get to the top? Yes, we can. Nice. Been a while since I played, so. This one, anyway. Hollow Terminus activated. Network traffic flow. Access records. There are no incoming calls currently registered with the Hollow Terminus. Logs and previous calls are available. That's weird. Do you mean there's a second one near here? Wait a second. There is. You don't like the hollow terminus I'm at? Ugh. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's a second one right there. It wanted me to be at a different one. 
Unbelievable. Hey, said I needed oxygen, right? Could use some sodium, too. And it's nighttime. You can always see these things so much better at night. How am I doing on dihydrogen? 8.30? Yeah, we're doing all right. Wow. Just kind of ridiculous sometimes the way this is. So we came from that one, and we had to go to this one. Well, I don't know. What do you want to relate it to? Hello. What are you? Docile. Oh, as long as you don't attack. I've been here. Fascinating. There we go. Stupid. <laughs> oh, this is where the call was coming to. I was on the wrong cell phone. Now, Apollo is always a different character. Pretty interesting guy, huh? More machine now than man. Twisted and evil. Well, no, he's not really a twisted guy. Well, maybe he loves twisted. Not evil, definitely not. Greed Apollo. Say so you are a friend of Artemis. No, you're not. Ask why. Why do you use the word at all? Friend. It is just a label. Pretense to make you feel better about being alone. That's sad. Why are you contacting me anyway? Is Artemis behind this? I haven't changed my mind. I don't care about their weird dreams. I'll meet if I'm paid to meet. And even this conversation is a waste of, of valuable time. Say Artemis is in trouble. I tell Apollo that Artemis is in trouble, that they attempted to use a portal and became stranded on some distant and uncharted world, disappearing from, this net, from the network. Apollo's demeanor changes. They appear uncomfortable at the news. Send me your data logs. Let me see this for myself. Upload the log. You can refuse if you want. I don't know what would happen, but I always upload it. I'm just that way. That's the way I play. Apollo studies the log, pausing and replaying the various segments of static and distortions. They turn to me with a glow of excitement. These noises, they sound just like the echoes of sentinel events. You've seen them before, of course. Drones that appear from nowhere if you interfere with their precious planets. But this data, it's distorted. Inverted. There's a lot, of, lot to gain if we figure out how the sentinels appear so quickly. And this, the portals, perhaps they're the key. Now I can either agree or suggest life is worth more than money. I'm suggesting life is more, worth more than money. Yes, yes, probably. But if we can figure this out, we can save Artemis too. Don't fret. So, what do you say? Do you want to work together on this? Be partners? Accept. If you're going to work with me, we need to expand your base of operations. I'll send you a contact. Send you to a contact of mine. They'll supply you with what you need. Just remember to be polite. End the communication. As the hologram recedes, Apollo's head turns to the side ever so slightly, as if sigh, saddened. Interesting. So, Apollo appears to be a jerk at first. But just like, I guess, you'd meet anybody on the street or something like that. But he immediately shows interest in the technical side of things and what could possibly be happening. But you're also going to see that he's going to show more than that later on. Or perhaps it was nothing, a ghost in the machine. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Uh, let me see, we could use some ammonia at some point. There's no ammonia on this planet, is there? Paraffinium. Do I have any paraffinium on me? Yeah, there it is. 538, that's pretty good. Another observatory. It's off-planet. Magnetized ferrite, paraffinium, copper. Okay, there's no ammonia on this planet. That's weird. Okay, let's head back to our uh, ship. Now, we should have plenty of navigation data. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get our ship to pull call to us. Do it right.
we'll get the other piece here while we call the ship in. We already got this one. <laughs> and I guarantee you we already got this one. We did. I'm not even going to bother checking in there. All right, let's jump in the ship. You know, it's funny. This ship looks just almost exactly like the ship I had during the looper runs. It's very interesting. Okay. Apollo's contact will help you expand your base. Locate them on the galaxy map. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um... Nothing really to be scanning for. How are we doing? 40% charge on my hyperdrive. That should get us there and back, I think. Plus, we can take the, the portal inside the space station or whatever system they send us to. So always use an efficient means and methods of getting from place to place if you can't afford to build everything you need. Okay. On our merry little way. So you can see any of the planets that you've been to are already getting circled. So you've been there, you've been there. That gives you a rough idea. You can see that your bases are in these systems here. I'm not sure why I have second a second base over here. That's probably my very first one, and I built a second one there. But we'll get to the names later. So here's a system we've never been to. And it's a Viking system. Looks like it has three planets. So let's take a look. I'll take a sip of coffee. It's funny, I did um, two or three recordings yesterday, and I literally was losing my voice by the end of the day. I did a uh, looper run that ran three and a half hours, so... Oh, are we in a battle? Sure are. Okay. We're going to get attacked from behind. Right? Oh, wow, this thing's powerful. One down. Who's next? Two down. We want to get over there. There we go. And where's the next guy? We're far enough away that we could just escape, but we're not going to. Come on. It's part of the game. Let's get that guy. Oh, there he is. You know, these guns actually get a little too OP. Let's go back after him. Never shoot towards the ship. Try to avoid hitting the freighter at all. Ah, crap. I don't know if we got him or not. Good. Got a Gek Relic out of that. And we got a bunch of nanites out of it. That's good. Eh, we're going to be landing at this ship anyway. It's a nice looking ship, actually. Do we have our freighter yet? I don't, you know. <clears throat> I don't know if we do or not. No, we don't. This could be our first freighter. Let's take a look, shall we? It's an A-class, too. Well, I'm not going to hold out for an S-class. That's not bad. Plus, I kind of like the way it looks. <clears throat> I'm more into the Star Destroyer-style ones, the little wedge-shaped ones, but this one's kind of sharp-looking. Always follow the red path up to the Admiral. Grab, pathetic interloper, blah, 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 freighter, viking, blah, blah, blah. He barks loud, a loud battle cry as I approach. Celebrating our victory, I hope. <laughs> they gesture toward the control panel of their freighter, as if to suggest I take command. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the freighter. So see what I mean? It's kind of a neat looking freighter, man. I love that, that blunt nose on the end. It's kind of looking like a... Uh, I don't know, pretty powerful ship, almost like out of Battlestar Galactica. If any of you can remember back that far, I'm not talking about the early 2000s. I'm talking way back when. Hmm. A bit of gold. Got some dihydrogen. Uh, no, deuterium. That's even better. Got some supercharged slots right next to each other. That's pretty good stuff. 
I'm going to go ahead and claim it. It's it, you get your first freighter for free. After that, they're worth a lot more. So now we have the extra slot up here for our freighter. Oh, man, the supercharged slots disappeared. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Not a big deal. Now, like I said, we do need silver, and we could use some gold. I'll take the deuterium because I could really use it. Is there anything on me or on my ship that I do not need right now? Let's put this down here because we're going to use that. Gather up to 30 of them. This will be useful for later. The deuterium is really handy because there's certain things you can make and build with deuterium. And the only other way you can get it is either from trading with somebody, finding it on a ship like we just did, or by um, creating it yourself with a medium refiner. So it's usually a good idea to grab it when you can. All right, what about my starship? Uh, oh, yeah, forgot about that. What do we get? A repair kit. Those are handy. I'll hang on to it. Um, those we're going to sell. They're going to sell that. We'll keep that, of course. Because we can make a warp hyper core later on with it. Or sell it. I mean, it's worth a lot of credits, but I've got 18 million credits as it is. Why am I doing that? Ignore me. I was going to come over here and put these into the I'm going to sell you slot. There we go. I like that better that way. Actually, I'm going to put you over here. All right, enough, enough, enough. I can, I can spend all day reorganizing everything. Uh, so... Manage Squadron. I have quite a bit of nanites. I can open up a slot for 800. I think I will. I don't like too many squadron pilots. It's good to have a full squadron. But honestly, having one extra or two extra is about all I'd ever want. All right, we can engage the warp drive if we want to charge it. And we can upgrade and customize the freighter, but we don't have any upgrade modules. We can also go down here and we can actually start creating things. What do they got here? They already have a refiner? Wow. And it's got three inputs. So we can make our own deuterium now. How do you make that? Let me show you. Dihydrogen and tritium gives you deuterium. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it is kind of expensive. You're using two items to make one. But deuterium is, like I said, a very handy material that you can use to create certain weapons on your ship. And it's good to have some extra laying around in case that particular item gets damaged. So I like to keep about, you know, 500 on board at any given time. Now, there's other ways I can get more. I could always cheat some more. I can always, you know, do uh, duplication glitches and stuff like that. But we're not doing this during this run. We're going to do everything by the book, legit, all the way. So let me wait the 15 seconds and we'll go ahead and do this. All right. Looks like it's done. All right. Whoops. That's not what I was trying to do. I'm not trying to talk to you. It's very nice to talk to you. I'm not here to talk to you. Sorry. I sound like a jerk, but... There we go. Okay. Uh, it's not that you don't, you don't matter. Oop. Where's this going? Uh, okay, then. We're outside. Fascinating. Into another area that has what? An Exocraft terminal. Oh, well, that's awesome. I didn't know it had this. This is pretty cool. Looks like you've already got cargo as well. No, this is the... <gasps> Holy crap. It's got a teleporter as well for the Exocraft, so I can call Exocraft in anywhere. And an extractor core? Awesome, because this is what we get out of it, chromatic metal. And we can also get cad cadmium. Boy, created and refined from stellar... Okay, rare... Right, we don't produce... I, yes, we know that. It could also pull out gases from certain systems, depending upon where the ship is located. Freaking awesome. Well, that's great. The only thing I'm not finding is I'm not finding a fleet management. You always, you always start out with one... Uh, so you're on a freighter with one frigate. So it's usually a good idea to create a, a fleet, fleet management control center. 
So I don't know if I have the resources to do so, but let me go ahead and create a corridor. And let me see if I can have anything else available to me. A fleet command room. That's what I'm looking for. And I do have the resources to make this. So I'm going to make one right here. I'm not sure which way to turn it. I don't know which ways. Let me just do something here real quick. I think it's, I think that's forward. Okay. So that's one. What else can we make? Construction specialist room, galactic trade room. We need the hydrogen to make the construction specialist room. Okay. What else we got? Cultivation chamber for plants. We get storage rooms too. Son of a gun. We got the refiner room. We already got one of those. That's great. We can have a storage room already well before the storyline gets there. I don't think you could do that yet. Hmm. I'm not saying anything. Let me see if I can do something with this. Yep, fleet command room. Am I positioned the right way? I sure am. Okay, good. Okay. Frigate fuel blueprints available to... Oh my gosh. Boy, did I get lucky. I'm glad I did that. Son of a gun. Now, can I make any? Let's see if we can make any. It's giving us 200 tons of fuel. I'll make an additional one, just in case. They are expensive to make. Need a lot of tritium. A lot of tritium. So, keep that in mind. Uh... Okay, good. Potential. Alright, you want to do something very simple. One star only. Do not go very, very heavy because the ship you have, the one freighter that you have, is not going to be very powerful. Assign a ship. We're going to assign the Kuhas, which is a two-star mining vessel, but it's still C-class. Okay. Doesn't have much on the exploration line of things. We have enough money that we could acquire more ships. So you know what? I'm going to skip this right now. We'll come back and do this later. Let's get on with the storyline. We have some uh, some business to attend to. Now I could take my freighter with me, but I'm not going to. So let's head to the space station. We have ourselves a new freighter. That is fantastic. And I will acquire more later. It's a nice looking ship. I do like it. All right. Space station. Now, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be heading, designating me anywhere. Uh, probably because the log changed. Let me check. Yeah, freighter command. See? I do want to locate base salt. Ghosts in the machine. And it is heading us to the space station. Okay, let's go there. I'm curious. I think I needed base salt for... Not for you. For you. Okay. We will try to locate some later. I may even pause the game real quick in order to find some. Alright. It's sending me over here. But, as with any space station, once you get there, the first thing you want to do is you want to hit the... Uh, upgrade kiosk over here for your exosuit so that you can get the latest upgrade. Now I got a full complement in here. I'm not going to worry about that. So we'll just continue upgrading the cargo for now. Um, we can check it. I don't have a lot of nanites, but 6,000. That's not too shabby, actually. Uh, S class only, please. We've got a shield. Underwater and movement. Let me see what I've got in my exosuit. Actually, I got pretty good upgrades already. Could always use a shield. And looks like we've already got underwater. But regular shield wouldn't be a bad idea because we're going to get into some battles on occasion, so it's not a bad idea at all. Let's go ahead and grab that.
There it is. All right. Okay. It doesn't really link to anything yet because we can create our own shield at one point. It's just that we haven't gotten there yet. We should kind of get this because it does add 10% and I've got the oxygen to do it with. So let's go ahead and create that. And I'm going to put it where it belongs. I didn't mean to put it there. And you should actually group these together. It should be spread out like they are. I'm assuming, yeah, okay, that's there. I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to put you over here. So this will keep everybody supporting this one. But one thing I want to look at in these life support tanks, the one thing we don't have that I see in here is that we don't have an increase in... And there wasn't one in here. Okay, we don't have an increase in the core health, so we want to look for them later on. Let's see if there's any upgrades for my ship here. Take a look at the ship real quick. What can we use? We could use an upgrade for our Infernife's Accelerator, even though it's already pretty powerful to begin with. Um, we're running out of room in our ship. We kind of need more room as well. I think we've talked about that. So if I can find something here, I'll go ahead and, na and nab it, but I probably will not... Uh, install it, of course. Yeah, yeah, talkative fellow there. Phase beam, launch thrusters would be nice. And hyperdrive. We needed a hyperdrive. We talked about that. So let's go ahead and grab that. That we're going to install. The only thing for Infernife is an A-class. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Launch thrusters are always good to always upgrade. I'm not going to install it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it because I don't have room, but, but this guy needs an upgrade. Something bad. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. What does it give us? Let's see. 220 light years, 100% efficiency. So let's see what happens. 125% efficiency and it jumps up to 275. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I think we're going to need a... Uh, let's see if I can get a few of these. At least a couple of them. Yep, okay, we got two. Let's just get two for now. Okay, that'll help. Alright, and we'll keep the other upgrades for later. So, let me take it and I'll put it in my other inventory. And as you can see, we've also got stuff to do. Now, we have that multi-tool upgrade. Let's go ahead and grab and put it in my multi-tool. See, install slot. We're going to go ahead and do that. Because uh, we obviously need room. I am going to try to get it close to these guys. Wow, we are like all right next to each other. That's fantastic. I'm going to put it here. Because otherwise, I mean, we could buy it, but you're going to see how expensive they are. See? Purchase new slot for $8 million. Not happening. Not happening. It's a regular slot, but we can go ahead and install an upgrade there later on. And we definitely need to... Let's do something here real quick. There, that'll help that out a little bit. Okay, everything else looks like it's in good shape. And that we have everybody surrounding it, but again, we need the basalt. Or basalt, as you want to call it, it's up to you. Uh, do we have any upgrades here I can grab? Let's just check real quick. I know we're spending a little time doing this. Not only the geology cannon. And I've got one on board my... Um... Where is it? I've got one on board here, but I'm probably going to get rid of it sooner or later. I mean, I've got the nanites. It does a good job to get certain things. Why don't we go ahead and do it, just because. I mean, I'll get nanites as I go. There's no doubt about it. You know how I like to discover every creature on the planet. So let's go ahead and get the one geology cannon upgrade, just to see how well it does after this. Boink. 
and boink. And you see it links to it. 41% explosion radius, got to stay out of it, and projectile velocity. So it should create a larger explosion. Could be handy against some of those uh, pesky sentinels. And that's another way we can get some good uh, upgrades. Hey, look, Panites. Well, I got about 60 or so. Eh, 40. Let's go ahead and sell the things that are on my person. I could use these to upgrade my, <clears throat> pardon me, my reputation with these people, with the Corvax, if I wanted to. But right now, money is what you're going to want to do. You'll use that stuff later on, and trust me, you're going to get tons and tons of that stuff as your time goes by. Gek Relics. I could do salvage data, but I'm going to hang on to it. We're going to need it. Trust me. Especially when we create our main base. Something that's not going to be our freighter. We want to stick to that storyline. Alright. Oh, you know what? I forgot to check. Real quick. Uh, what do they have to sell? Cobalt. Remember we were needing some? I got the money to buy it. Uh, I like to have some wiring looms on board. They're expensive, I know. So I'm going to get a half a million of them. Six of them ought to do. I'm going to get some microprocessors. I could buy them, but it's good to have them on board. Uh, unstable plasma. I don't think I have any. They're not terribly expensive. And I might be able to make them later on. Let's just get five for now. Always going to need ferrite dust. Grab it when you can. Chromatic metal, I have over a thousand. Uranium is a good thing to get. Pyrite is even better. I don't think we have too much in the way of pyrite. Let's check. Oh, no, we have plenty of pyrite. Uranium we could use. I'll put you down here. And you're a tool. And I'll put you down here, too. Okay, let's get some uranium. Uh, do I have any on my person? No, I do not. Okay, yeah, we did have plasma. Okay, good. Well, this gives a few a few extra to us. That'll be handy later on. And you notice we've got the wiring looms. I had a few, but now I've got more. That's good. Okay, let's get the uranium. I want to have some on my person as well. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. Zip. Okay, good. Pyrite is good for building certain things, but... Okay, that'll be good. 260 on me, 500 on the ship. That'll be very handy. Okay. All right. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to talk to these guys. Oh, look at that. They're directing me at him as a base commander? Two right minutes ago. Let's... I've obtained the requested upgrades. New modules for your base for protection against the elements. Well, I'll be. Every single time I've had a base commander, it's always been a Gek. <clears throat> this is the first time it's been a Viking. I actually don't think it's anything in particular. I don't remember which protection I need. I should have checked that before I talked to him. I'm pretty sure I have heat protection. Can I get out of this? Oh, well, crap. <clears throat> I didn't choose a particular number, so I don't know what I got. Let's find out, shall we? He gave me heat protection automatically. And I already had heat. Okay. But I had cold. And I have toxic. Radiation would have been the way to go. Oh, well. But we could sell that. We don't need that. I don't think it's... Yeah, it's... We already got one. And it's an S-Class, so... Okay. Well, that's interesting. So he's going to be my base commander. How fa fabulous. A Viking base commander. Nice. Let's check the other uh, trade terminal, and then we're going to go ahead and jet, jet out of here and take care of the next section here. You notice it's already been 35 minutes. I mean, you could really take your time and go through the storyline, or you can rush through it. Up to you. Uh, they got more cobalt in here. I already grabbed that. Right, does magnetized ferrite. I do not have a lot of. I'm going to get some of that. It's always good to keep base metals on hand. 
Uh, gold, we already just picked up a bunch of it from my freighter, so I'm going to hold off on that. Ammonia is a good idea because it charges certain things. So I'll get some of that too, since we have the money. This we're going to put in our ship for now. This we're going to get rid of at one point or another. This we'll hang on to. Pugnium we don't really need on ourselves. We'll put it in our ship. Gold and silver can go on our ship. I try to keep metals together if I can. So platinum, paraffinium and platinum can both go on the ship. We'll keep this, we'll keep this, because again, they're used to charge things. Copper, we had plenty of it, we'll put it on the ship. Uh, I'm going to keep the chromatic metal, because every now and then you need it. Okay, good. Looks like everything's together. I'll put uranium there. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get going. Now, this is a opulent system. That means it is very, it's a three-star system. Any ships that land here will be really nice, things like that, but we're not going to have to worry about that. We're just going to do this real quick to jump in and out and save. And we're going to head to the base using the transport terminal. Save a little bit on our hyperdrive there. So what we're seeing is a whole bunch of other things here. We're going to look at our bases. So there's the pre-base that we had. We're going to build our main base on the uh, uh, Ilicito colony. We ought to rename that. Paradise Planet, that's why. So we're going to build it there. So let's warp there. And we'll be back in just a moment. So here we are, folks. We're getting back to the base now. Now, a couple different things happened. Of course, uh, in the process of unpausing my video, I accidentally stopped it and wasn't even realizing. I guess I needed more coffee this morning and accidentally proceeded with doing about a good 10 minutes worth of uh, uh, what I thought was video. And basically, I was just talking to myself, which is kind of what we do when we're making videos anyway. Uh, there's a psychological thing behind all that, but I'm not going to get into it again. Not enough coffee, and I have figured it all out. So where are we with this? What we've done uh, in the last 10 minutes is I have created this cylindrical uh, building here. I've hooked it up to power um, to check. I want to see how much power is being drawn. Oh, it's a trickle. Okay, that's not enough to cause me any problems because daylight coming soon. Yeah, it says 45 minutes until drained. Yeah, we're not going to use that much power. Uh, if we check this guy here, it'll tell us daylight time, which should. Yeah, dark hours remaining 10 minutes. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. So we've hooked up the cylind uh, cylindrical uh, building. It doesn't really connect to the other buildings in a very easy way. There's not too many construction uh, behind anything here. Uh, let's check this out. See, this is all you gave, it gave me. So that's all I can build. I can't really build a tunnel leading between them. And this doesn't have much to begin with as well. The funny part is, is that I see this storage container. We've already gotten that as one of our things. We built a construction terminal and we hired the overseer. The overseer, apparently the person I was talking to was only someone hired by the, the by Apollo to give me, to get me started and boosted. This is actually my overseer. He's a toilet gek. And I'm not particularly fond of Gex. They tend to use their pheromones to incite you to do things that you don't intend to do on your own. So not really happy about that. Never really was a big fan of them. Especially after everything that they tried to do in the past. In the history of the No Man's Sky universe, that is. Uh, Corvax is my second favorite species. I really do appreciate what they do. The, the methodical, logical way of doing things. They're machines, with the exception of Nada. Of course, he's a little bit separated from the rest and the Corvax that you get here is going to be a little different uh, but the Viking have always reminded me of um, a species from the Star Trek universe of course Klingons and uh, really appreciate their no-nonsense manner uh, so even though they're warrior class and they're very uh, prone to anger they tend to be more my style I don't know how else to put it that way so anywho so we'll be getting along a little bit later on so let's go ahead and finish our storyline 
You have so much to learn, so much to see, and this place will be our home amidst the infinite. Take this glass and let starlight flood into our jolly home, except the glass. So now we can make gra glass. Now it shows us making it out of frost crystals. You'll, we'll, we'll show you a different way to do that. Everything pours through glass in the end, but there's time enough for that. There are other things we have to do. If you prepare chromatic metal, I will use it to calibrate a science terminal suitable for a Corvax entity. The Corvax have suffered terribly at the hands of my people. Be kind to them, I beg of you. The overseer asked me to gather chromatic metal in preparation for the recruitment of a Corvax scientist. We're obviously going to accept. Twelga K has or is already making themselves useful. A science terminal, a new Corvax guest, and all for just a handful of chromatic metal. So we'll do that in just a second. I am going to make this, but I want to show you what we're going to do. Now, let me check my inventory real quick. We need this silicate powder. So it requires 60, uh, 40, 40 frost crystals to make glass. However, silicate powder, I'll put half a stack in here, gets us glass as well. I'm going to make four. Oh, by the way, <laughs> actually, yeah, let's make four. And let's see in my build menu if I can make anything. Yeah, I can't really make anything just yet. I can't make windows. And we'll make windows later. I will get some of those. But I'm going to make the glass. Actually, I think I'm going to keep it here. Yeah, I'm going to keep it in the, in the refiner. I can always build a new refiner later on. Now, one thing I need to do is I need to gather up some berry technology. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to do it off camera and we'll come back because we're going to need some later when we go to the anomaly. Okay, uh, so see you in just a few and I'll, I'll make sure I pause properly this time. Okay, we're back. I um, wanted to show you a little something here. Um, not sure if you come across these buildings before. These are abandoned buildings. Um, they don't play into the storyline too, too much, other than that there are something here called Whispering Eggs. And as you try to take a Whispering Egg, some monstrosities appear, or things that come out of the ground. Um, I'm trying to describe something to it, let me think here. If you remember a movie called Starship Troopers, the creatures in that movie are very similar. Um, another creature very similar would be the creatures from Ender's Game as well. The alien creatures from Ender's Game. Very similar in nature to that one as well. So they're kind of creepy looking. Um, and they will attack. They can hurt you pretty bad if you don't do it right. <clears throat> Pardon me. But the eggs are very, very valuable. So I'm going to show you the technique for doing so. Again, this is an abandoned building, so let's go inside. Hey, buddy. Okay. Inside, you're going to find all kinds of neat stuff. It looks like this is pretty well abandoned. Um, if you go to Deserted Terminal, you'll get a little bit of byplay here. You'll have to clear out the goop that's on the screen. And it's going to turn crimson red in a little bit, so... Returning user identified. Terminal now active. Unlocking data log. Continue, continuation for analysis. The oceans here are blood. Nothing lives in them. They are alive themselves. Great protein life forms. Oh, pardon me. That was really bad. Great protean life forms as large as continents. Or perhaps there is only one of them. What does such a thing consume, I ask myself. The answer seems to be everything. I found evidence of past life here, but no signs of it. Does the native flora and fauna hibernate when it comes to eat them? They return and repopulate once it retreats? I can feel it moving inside my brain, whispering. It wants me to discard my suit and swim. Analyze data log. I discovered something coded deep inside the long dead traveler's data log. Something has been left that will aid me on my journey. It's a good thing to read these because, as you can see, 136 nanites, it's actually worth doing. But it is kind of creepy that this guy died in such a creepy, creepy way. Who writes these things? I have no idea over in Hello Games. Whether it's Sean himself or he has other people doing the storyline, it can get really, really creepy. So one thing you can get here is you can get a lot of these things laying around here that you can pick up. You also have to watch for tendrils hanging from the ceiling. They will attack you as you walk through. You won't look at your radar up above and look for something with an exclamation point. Oh, I see one. 
There's one right there. Let's head to the left and see if we can avoid it. Yes, we did. It's right there in that corner. There we go. We get a little oxygen from that. Again, more of these canisters. This will give us a research specimen, which will increase our standing with a certain group. In this case, the Viking. Uh, you will find sometimes damaged machinery inside. No harm in grabbing it. Okay. I got some nanites out of that. Okay, good. And always search around the outsides. Look for anything else. This will give you a word of the day. Not. This will give us some things sometimes. Nothing found. Not all the time. And a couple more of these. I know there's a lot of things in here than usual. Okay, no other exits to reach to get out of this place. So I picked up some good, decent stuff here. Uh, put that down there. This is something that I was given from the Viking. Something that I can trade. And I kept some of this. This is dioxide. It's used on frozen environments for your for, uh, up for getting this going a little bit, as well as your life support. See? Uses a lot less than the oxygen you have. So it's a good idea to grab some dioxide because it... It's very, very efficient in charging your life support. Keep it charged up during this because you're going to need it. So here we go. How do we do this? So as I take an egg with my mining beam, the monstrosities appear, and then it's a running game. See? Nasty guys, aren't they? Just start running. You don't have to run fast. Just go around, hit one, pick it up as you go, run to the next one. Hit one, pick it up, run as you go, go to the next one. There are others there, but you have other crops to, to harvest from. Oh, I got two this time. Keep going. And they are not chasing you per se, but they're randomized. You're going to come straight at you. They're going to jump at you occasionally. Oop, one hit me, but you see it's, I'm on ground level, so it didn't really hurt me too bad. Occasionally the eggs won't give you anything, but turn quite often because that will allow them to miss you. Oh, there's two there. What? Oh, he hit me and hurt me. It's okay, I was already down one plus, so. Oh, uh, someone shot me with one of their, they spit at you too, so you gotta be careful of that. But why am I doing this? Well, I'll show you in the end why. You get two things from larval cores. They're worth a lot, first of all, in regards to just regular, ordinary money. Credits-wise, they're worth a lot. So, go ahead and grab it. This one is empty now. I don't need to hit it anymore. That one's empty now. I don't need to hit it anymore. Use your jetpack when you have to. Oh, that one's gone. That one's gone. Okay. So we'll do one more round. See? Oop, that one glitched out a little bit. Run. Okay, I think we said that one was empty. And this one is empty. So sometimes you get yourself stuck. He hit me. That's okay. Didn't go far. Whoop. I'm not sure what kind of journey I'm getting right now. I'm going to skip that. They're going to continue to be pissed while you're picking up their eggs. That's empty. See, it's not as crazy as it needs to be. Okay, I just wanted to check that one. Ooh, that one was spitting at me. I think we only have like one or two eggs to get. That one's empty, right? Yep. Don't stand still too long. So this was a good uh, a good run on this one. Oh, oh that one was an empty one. Ah, miss me. Nothing there. You'll take a leap. And these are all empty. Okay, so we're done. So what I usually do at this point is I get to the top of the structure and I hang out. They can't hit you up here. So what did we end up with? 24 of them. How much are they worth? A stack of them is worth 700,000 units. 
1.4 million. Eh, 1.6, 1.7, oh, probably close to 1.8 million when all said and done. So that's worth a lot. But what else can they do for you? Each one of these is also worth nanites. So I'm going to separate that out, and I'll show you that in a little bit when I put it in a refiner. They're also worth nanites. So you, if you're really stuck on nanites, you can just uh, put them in your refiner when you get a chance. Wait till the swarm subsides, and they will start sinking into the ground. See? Which is creepy as crap. Just wait till all the green little fa smiley faces are gone. And we're done. See? All set. So, we'll come back in just a moment. And we're back. And so what we're going to do here real quick is I'm going to go into my refiner. I'm going to pull this out because we don't need to have it there. And I'm going to show you real quick. It gives us 50 nanites for every single one of these. So if you think about it, a stack of 10 gives you 500 nanites. So those two stacks alone is a thousand nanites if I really, really want to do that. Um, I don't usually subscribe to that. I like to spend the larval cores on getting some cash because units, you know, it's not that they're hard to come by. It's that you're going to spend a lot of units and you kind of need everything you can get. That said, we have our chromatic metal. Let's go ahead and finish this overseer duty out real fast. The overseer speaks strangely, implying that we have performed this encounter before. I have no memory of such meetings. So this should really give you a clue in regards to the whole time, uh, the whole storyline here. You you already know that your character has appears to have died and been reborn, and that's where you are. You're trying to figure out and put all the pieces together in your memories. But you're not remembering any of this. But he seems to. And remember, he said this was paid to a paid for a long time ago. Before you died last time. Possibly of old age. So, are we talking about reincarnation here? Let's continue on the storyline. You'll see what's going on. I ask who paid them for this service they are performing for me. They laugh and claim that my child did many years from now. That's mind-blowing. I do not know what they're talking about. The Overseer asked me for the chromatic metal. Let's give that chromatic metal. Perfect, friend. I knew you would succeed, just when I need to finish the science terminal plans. And there it is. We need chromatic metal and magnetized ferrite. Aren't you glad I bought some? We have littered the universe in our greed, Traveler. This planet is no exception, but there is much that can be done with litter. Make your way to an abandoned structure and harvest the data from the terminals. I shall use it to fashion us plans for a storage container. Now, the funny thing is, I already got one, so I'm not sure how this works. Well, Gek Hay is reflective for a Gek. They almost seem to regret the greed that characterizes their people. They wish to make something new from the remains of the old. Is this just greed in disguise or something else? Whatever their motive, the Overseer claims I will find data for a storage container blueprint in a nearby structure. Except... You won't regret it, friend. I've marked you a site that seems to be ripe for exploitation. Now, the problem is, <clears throat> let's build the science terminal real quick. I want to finish that, uh, finish that out. We'll find that here, and I'll put it over here. So we have that. We're not going to get the recruit yet. We're going to do that on the next episode, and we'll do the science line of things, too. So I'm going to go back to my log. I'm going to go down to expanding the base, and I need to find an abandoned building. The problem is I just found one, right? So I'm hoping that it doesn't direct me to the same abandoned building. So let's see where it's pointing me here. There we go. It's over there. 16 minutes away. Okay, that's good to know. So let's get this data. We'll come back and we'll end the episode there. Instead of 16 minutes of running, I'm going to take 15 seconds to fly. And these solar ships are great for the launch thrusters. They do an auto-charge thing. Really handy to have. Whoa, hello. 
that must be the structure we're looking for. Remember how I got all those uh, eggs? We could do it again. I'm not going to this time. What I might do... Uh, let's see, I don't have a save beacon yet, so I can't put a save point down here to save this, but I'll find it another time, I'm sure. Big structure. A lot of eggs. I'm tempted, but I'm not going to. Oop. Yeah, missed the ramp. Okay, remember, watch for the tendrils. I don't see any here. Very similar to the last one. We're going to go ahead and go to the corrupted terminal. Let's eat up all this stuff here. Same thing. User identified. Terminal active. Accessing schematics. The place the overseer has led me to has long since fallen into disrepair. Its panels are buried beneath the same oily, pulsating fauna that I have seen before in long abandoned buildings. The air is fetid and damp. I power up the terminal with little hope of success, but to my surprise, it buzzes noisily and springs to life. Analyze schematics. My overseer's intuition has served me well so far. I shall have to trust that these schematics contain the date required data. So it didn't give me the schematic because I somehow already have it, but it gave me absolutely nothing but to continue the storyline. While we're here, let's gather up some materials. Um, sorry. Interesting. Terminal breached, security measures activated, user logged, data wiped. Terminal has not responded positively to my probing. I have the data ID, but there seems little hope of gathering any more information. Test input signal, the machine remains unresponsive. No, I was trying to go for these guys anyway. I don't need to recharge my shield. Oh, yep, he's in the corner again. They usually will appear in the same places every time. And like I said, these things tend to... Ah, level 7. Nice. And again, this is early game, so we're going to gather stuff as we go. Um, probably not a bad idea to do this every single time. That's what I would recommend. Uh, search. I don't seem to have a yellow box this time. I get some projectile ammunition. Let's run the word of the day. The word is in. Okay. Let's move on. Now we're going to have some... Oops, boink. We're going to have a buried technology module here, so we'll go ahead and grab it while we're here. Always like to clean up my mess. Not always, but most of the time. All right, where's ship? Ship. There we go. Um, okay. That was weird. I landed on the tailbone. Eh, whatever. And we're going to head back to our base. All right. So, and we're going to rename the base real quick. I'm not liking this Ilicito colony. Uh, just uh, another minor settlement there. I'd already visited that one before. And plant. Spin. And we're in. Okay, good deal. So we're in pretty good shape. Um, let me rename the colony. We'll talk to the overseer. We're going to name this... Elon Main Base. Very simple. Okay. And let's go visit our overseer, turn this in, and we're going to end this episode. Togek. You are back. I am so glad, friend. I will extract the storage blueprint as soon as I have the data. It is good to see the Gek is so invested in the success of our home. They are clearly happy to see me energized for the task at hand. Give the data. Here is your blueprint as promised. A trivial task. Their code was just sitting there to be manipulated. And we get all the storage containers now. Isn't that fantastic? Now they've upgraded these things in the newest version. So now then. Do you think, friend, that we should put that science terminal to use? Fill our home with the clicks and lights of the Corvax. It would be so lovely. 
The OSIR feels the base will benefit from a Corvax scientist. They would like to see good use made of the blueprint they work so hard on. Agree. I'm so glad we had this chat, friend. Now, this line finishes until we get our science guy, and we can continue with another subline. So you'll notice that if we look at our log, we're expanding the base, but he wants us to hire a scientist, so we have to go back over here and look for science research. These are all secondary missions, as it says. So we're going to find some science research. By doing that, we're going to hire a base scientist, and we're going to go do that storyline as well. We have to proceed along these storylines for a little bit before we can go back to Ghost in the Machine, because it needs us to get further in our expanding of the base. So we'll be doing that. We'll be continuing that in our next episode. So I, whoop, how did that happen? Science research. There we go. Okay. So we'll be doing that soon. We'll be going to another system and we will pick up where we left off. So I'm going to do a quick save here. It's habit. And there we go. And we'll come back here in just a little bit. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Always be kind. And of course, always be truthful in all things. We'll see you in the next episode.